Well, two firsts on this trip. <laughs> first time I've ever shot a bull while it was fighting. And first time we've ever extracted an elk from a lake.
problem that we're facing here. So that this bull that we were on earlier pushed off the state land and onto some trust land that is pre -vate. And probably not the best thing for us to go trompsing around on for a day or so, but we uh, need to get him back either up out of there onto the state stuff or back up to where we originally found him this morning, which was on the state stuff. So we got a, we got a dilemma on our hands and a vocal bull. Nice dark horn five point, good bull. We got average representation for the area, I would say. Typical Roosevelt five point, heavy horned and dark. So we might have to go find a different one. Let him get himself back up here onto the state stuff. He'll be in a better position one day, as long as he keeps talking. We're gonna hang out here and uh, have some top ramen. Stay out of the wind. And um, maybe we'll get lucky and the elk will come into our racket and ruckus and top ramen scent. Yeah, day four is a little rainy. Day four is a little blah. That's a fact.
60, 70 yards, but the wind is stinking thermals all day long going up, so it came in from the top. All right, so we get over here, right down. So he was responding to Jeff's calls, but their nose doesn't fall, so. Ready to pack another one tonight? If it happens, I'm more than willing to pack another one. It'd be a late night and it'd be a two bowl first for us in one day, but I'm game. Make it easy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, it wouldn't make it easy, but it uh, take a little pressure off. I just figured that we'll go sit up where the elk were and instead of sitting here, we can sit up on the side of the hill and see if we get lucky again.
just as many responses as we've been getting. None. I can't take my dog to the uh, duck pond anymore. He, all the ducks keep attacking him. I guess that's what I get for getting a purebred dog. Camera guy grunts. <laughs> So that bull from a couple days ago seems to be right back in that same timber patch. Incredible morning. Elk within 50 yards. Not a lot of action from us. Not a lot of action. We spent most, well, all morning and then most of the afternoon just packing my bull out. Shuttling. Shuttling his elk back out and... Had about an hour, I think, of daylight left when we got back to camp. So we just ran up on a hill and sat at the edge of a meadow right above camp, but didn't even hear a bugle. We'd seen elk go across that opening three days in a row. Mm, maybe, I maybe don't two. think that opening. I think you're thinking of the opening up the canyon a little farther. No. That was just a good looking opening. Yeah. But again, look promising. Sitting, even for an hour, it's going out of my mind yeah. just sitting there, nothing bugling. And you don't want to just bugle and bugle and bugle because then they know you're right there and they might come slipping in. So, no. horrible. But uh, Pure Elevation had a super slow evening. Looks like they're wet. Looks like they're uh, moving to plan B. Yeah, relocation, which. It's probably a, a good idea and probably a good topic to talk about for our strategy for success for this episode is just not getting stuck in a rut, not doing the same thing every day if it's not working. And, you know, they're hunting some nasty country. They're not getting into a lot of elk. The only elk they've actually called in has been the same small five point, which they're not willing to, to shoot it and pack it out of down there. So. I think relocating is is the right thing. I know for me, I've gotten stuck in a rut before and hunted the same area the same way for the whole whole hunt. And then the last day you relocate and you realize, wow, there's a whole yeah. different experience going on in a in another area. So just a couple drainages away. Yeah. And I've had, you know, every fall hunters will email or message me and say, yeah, my hunt this year was a real bust. We spent eight days hunting the same drainage and never even saw a track or heard an elk bugle the whole time. And it's pretty rare that I'll go more than a day or two. And if I don't hear an elk bugle or see an elk yeah. or something, I'm, uh, I'm leaving the area and finding a new area. So that's important uh, to understand that things change from even drainage to drainage, you know, and, and it's not worth, if you aren't having opportunities, you've got to be having opportunities. So you've got to go somewhere and, and create some opportunities. And that's why it's important to have backup areas, multiple backup areas. We've used seven or eight backup areas in a week of hunting to, to finally get into elk. So I think uh, for the strategy for success, just if things aren't working out, move. Whether that means packing out like they are multiple miles out of steep country, uh, whether it would be, you know, for us, we're on motorcycles, whether it's going to another motorcycle trail or going out and road hunting like we've yeah. talked about. Uh, Angry Spike is, you know, they're hunting out of a vehicle, whether it's just going to a completely different area and, and hunting there. I know they're very mobile, moving around a lot, uh, but you just, you've got to make sure you don't get stuck in that rut and stuck doing the same thing the same way day after day and expecting it to change. Yep. So that's our Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation strategy for success today. And speaking of uh, Corey and Shannon and Angry Spike, they, uh, they sat on that bull all morning. You know, Corey <laughs> had really aggressive bugling. The bull was fired up and then it moved across the draw. And so they sat on it 
for a while and regrouped and uh, moved back in, got it fired up again. And this time just happened to find an open. You could see 40 or 50 yards in there. And yeah. I think the bull spotted them and they kind of bumped it a little bit. Uh, and it moved off onto private timberland company, I think, that yeah. they couldn't hunt on. So they're back to, you know, they have to go to a new area now because that bull's not accessible and relocating to find another bull. Yeah. What was with your dad joke? That was possibly <laughs> the worst dad joke that you've ever told. He's made of bread. He's a purebred dog. Ducks are attacking my dog. Yep. That's what you get for buying a purebred dog. Yeah. Because ducks like bread. Well, my boss really likes my jokes. He texted me earlier and said, Hey, can you send me another one of your dad jokes? I said, I'm working right now, but I'll send you one here in a little bit. And he said, Ha oh, ha, that's a good one. Send me another. <laughs> Uh, that's better. Uh, you, you gave him a bonus one because yeah. the, the episode one was so bad. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Um, giveaway for today. We've got the Peaks Storm Castle Gator. So we wear these a lot. They are very waterproof. Very waterproof and very comfortable. Uh, they're just, it seems like everything Peaks makes is made with purpose and function and like well, everything else they're high quality and we uh i mean trekking poles headlamp gators yeah. i use them every time i'm out so yeah speaking of tracks i think that if you go to their website now their tent oh is the teepee the teepee is available now it is. So you can go there and check that out. And and that just goes to show, we took that TP to Alaska yep. a year and a half ago. And I, I used it this last season. That's what I'm using during this hunt. Yep. Uh, but they just didn't want to release it until they had plenty of time to test it to work out every little bug. Yep. <laughs> No pun intended, or maybe pun was intended, but that was the only thing, the only feedback I gave them. I don't like floorless shelters, and it has a floor in it, but it doesn't have the screen, the, the nest in it. And I had spiders in my teepee all season long. So that is a recommendation, and Bryce assures me that they are coming out with a nest in the teepee uh, in the near future. So. Yes. That way no bugs will be crawling on me. And if you go to their website and buy one of the Destination Elk 5 shirts, you'll get the nest. You'll get the headlamp. You'll get the gators. You'll get a teepee. If, if. <laughs> you are selected <laughs> as the winner. That was the small print I was waiting for. Yeah. No, so the winner... If you buy one of the t-shirts, you get entered into becoming a lifetime peak giveaway winner, giveaway winner, which is all of their products that they come out with, they will send to you. Yep. As Everything that they have now, which is trekking poles, gators, headlamp, TP. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything there, but that that's the existing stuff. But the really cool part about being the winner of this giveaway is every time they come out with a product in the future, you're going to receive one. So this is a, a giveaway that keeps on giving. So yes. just go to peaks dot or peaks equipment.com and check out the details. Like Donnie said, the only way you can enter is by purchasing a limited edition, special edition destination elk V5 shirt that's only available there. And when you purchase that shirt, they are donating the proceeds from the sales to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and they're giving you an entry to win the lifetime giveaway. Yep. So visit peaksequipment.com to order, to win, to get yes. cool gear. And to get the prize package, the Elk 101 prize package. Oh, the daily episode giveaway. Just leave your comment below. 
I think that's where I started, right? With it is. The gators are in the, so the castle, storm castle gators are the Peaks product in today's gear package that also includes Mountain Ops, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and Yeti products as well. Yep. So be sure and subscribe to the Elk 101 YouTube channel. That just lets you get a notification every time something new comes out. It also helps us grow our subscribers and be sure to like this episode, leave a comment, share it if you'd be so inclined. Yep. And we will uh, be back very soon with another episode of Destination Elk. Yes.